Hey, hey, all you mentees, Uncanny Omar here from Near Mint Condition, the home of Collected Editions, and join me today for my overview of the We Only Find Them When They're Dead Deluxe Edition from Boom Studios. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, what we're looking at today is the We Only Find Them When They're Dead Deluxe Edition. This is the latest Deluxe Edition from Boom Comics, the same people that did the Something's Killing the Children and the Mighty Morphin, Mighty, Uncanny Omar Talk Pretty One Day, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Deluxe Editions. As a matter of fact, this is the same dimensions as those. To kind of give you an idea about the height of this book, and here it is, right beside the Power Rangers Deluxe Edition. But in case you're not a collector of those deluxe editions i wanted to compare the size to that of an omnibus so these are a little bit taller than your omnis from marvel and dc and here it is compared to the spine now of course one of the biggest differences in these deluxe editions is also that they have a flat spine now let's take a closer now let's take now let's take a closer look at the cover here here's our main four characters uh, from the first story arc, there's three different story arcs told through here, but they all are connected. And I'll explain a little bit when we're looking at the inside of the book. Al Ewing, Simone DeMeo, we only find them when they're dead in big, bold letters. Uh, Boom Studios here, we only find them when they're dead. Al Ewing and Simone DeMeo. And then the back of the book telling you absolutely nothing about what the story is. Uh, but showcasing the character of Paula back here. And the ISBN down there with the retail price of this book being $49.99. Now we're going to open this book up. I'm going to give you the pitch of the story and show off what the artwork looks like. And we'll be looking at the extras and of course the build. Okay, let's go ahead and get this book open. We have some stars here as our end sheets. We only find them when they're dead. Published by Boom Studios. Uh, written by Al Ewing, Simone DeMeo doing the illustrations, meaning the pencils and the inks. And then color assistance by Maria Asada Miotti and lettered by N-World Design. So I think Simone DeMeo also did some of the coloring in here because I know they did in the pages of the, what was it, the Teenage Mutant Ninja, Ninja Turtles and Power Rangers and in the Power Rangers book. Uh, this is beautiful. This is a dedication to Simone's mother, to my mother who taught me to look at the stars, 1967 to 2020, chapter one. So one thing you're going to notice right away is there is no cover, and that's the way this is broken down. It's kind of like the way that we've seen the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Why can't I say that word? <laughs> the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, uh, or the Something is Killing the Children, although the Deluxe Edition didn't have the covers in the back. Still waiting on that. Um... Or there are other collections like Claws that we've seen in the Deluxe Edition. So the covers will be in the back. And we kick off in the year 2023. Now don't get used to that year because this is going to jump back and forth, jump back and forth. I love this. We only find them when they're dead. That is so in your face. Book one, The Seeker. And like I mentioned, this is split up into three different parts. And we are here in the year 2367 with the character of Georges Malik who was a young man here with his mother looking out in the space. But in 2367, he's older and in charge of this autopsy ship. And we'll explain what that is in a little bit. So here you meet the four crew members of the Vihan 2. So there is, like I mentioned, George's Malik, who is kind of like the leader of this group. Then you have Ella Hauer and her brother Jason Hauer. They're both in there with him. And also Alice Worth. Now... What this is about is in this future, so the year 2327, 2376, and we'll be jumping around a lot here, Captain Malik and the crew of the spaceship, Vihan 2, are searching for resources. So what they're doing is they are looking for gods, as they call them, uh, to get resources, meat, and things like that from them. And they're finding corpses of gods out in space. And that's what they set out to do. They set out, like a ballet, I love this, uh, to cut the gods up into pieces, big chunks, and haul away the things that they will use back uh, to eat or whatever they need. And that's what this type of world is. Now, of course, it's not just them. They have to abide by certain rules. So there's like space police out there. 
And what the first issue teaches us is that we go back to George's past here and to learn that his mother taught him that there are gods out there. And there's a little bit of jumping around back and forth, back and forth. And he is set out to do a specific plan because the title comes from they only find gods when they're dead. What he wants to do is take his entire crew and break protocol and the law and go into the dark regions of space to find a god that is still alive. And that's what the first story arc is. So all the crew members uh, go on silent mode because you'll read this a lot. The ship has ears. And they decide to go past this dark spot to go into the dark regions of space to see if they can find one that is still alive. Now, that's a really cool premise. I, I was hooked from that premise. I was like, oh, that's really cool. And the fact that he threw in, Al Ewing threw in the title of the book in there. We only find them when they're dead. Nice touch. Now, it gets confusing because we are talking about Al Ewing. We're introduced to another character named Paula who has a grudge with uh, George. Uh, something that happened in her past. She blames him for something that he did. And he blames her for something that she's responsible for. And she's kind of your antagonist. She's there to stop them. And by the time you get to the fourth and fifth issue, before the beginning of the second story arc... A lot of things change, and you're going to be left with a lot of questions. But I always tell people to hold on, because Al Ewing always answers a lot of these things throughout his stories, whether it's Immortal Hulk or Ultimate. Uh, he always tends to leave out these little hints of what the answers are throughout his story. Now, we're going to jump a little bit here, and I promise not to get into too many spoilers, because now we are 70 years into the future from that first story. Some of these characters are still around i'm not going to go into detail as to who or what's happened but this time around this particular group of characters so we're introduced to new characters they are looking for something different they want to go and find a living god and without going into spoilers this living god is kind of known everywhere to have existed and there's only one person that can take them there it's kind of hard to talk about without going into spoilers. Um, but you can find out for yourself who that one person is. And then we get to the third book, and that is The Soul. And this is when things really get confusing. Because now we're looking at 2452, and I like being confused. As long as things are properly explained. And we meet this particular character. This is Theory 9, who is an AI, AI unit. That's exactly what he is. And his purpose is to go and find the corpse of a particular god and it's a really interesting story because where you think it's going to go there's a lot of twists and turns that don't take you where you think it's going to go the like whenever you're reading the first book book one here you think okay they're going to go and find a god it's going to be a living god but what exactly does that make it what does that mean about gods and are they really gods or is this just something that these people are calling them because they're big and oversized? And why do they look like humans? And why? what killed them? What could possibly kill a god? So there's questions like that that I promise do get answered. And some that you're left wondering, did that really get answered? Is that enough of a resolution? Or did I miss something? And this might require another read-through. It's just another one of these Al Ewing books where he takes you on a wild ride. And he expects you to kind of keep up with him. And I get it. I enjoy stories like that. Jonathan Hickman does the same thing. He th throws you into the middle of something and hold on because you're expected to catch up just like that. However, in this one, I don't think the real answers came until like the final couple of issues. Like where all of this was going, what it was really about. And it all goes back to that flashback of George and his mother and the role that she played in his life. Now, George himself also had a hidden agenda, why he wants to go find the living God, which changes things. And you're like, oh, man, that was one of the coolest twists. Now, let's look at the extras. So this is additional artwork by Simone DeMeo. So we're looking at the covers here. Textless covers. You don't see what issue they are from 
there's also a timeline back here that I don't recommend reading because there are spoilers in that timeline as to which characters survive, which are dead, who's related to who. So don't look at the timeline. The covers themselves are okay. They're mainly covered by like the wordings there. Uh, but yes, definite timelines there. And then the bio on the creators. Let's go back and then we'll look at the actual uh, build of the book. One of the things I will say about the book that makes it a little complicated for me. And not just the story jumping back and forth with the timelines. But the art. I think the coloring and the art could have been a little bit different when you're looking at different times. I think that would have really helped out the book. Because it is sometimes hard to follow. I, but, you know, I love Trigun. And I always said this about Trigun, the manga, that whenever I'm looking at Trigun, sometimes the action sequences are hard to follow. And because of the coloring and, I don't, I don't know, the panel layout is actually pretty solid. I think it's mainly due to the dark tones that they're using for the coloring and the lack of contrast. That sometimes the action sequences are kind of hard to follow. And sometimes when people are talking or just sitting there and having a conversation, it's a little hard to see who is saying what what character is saying what um, but that's just one of the things that I noticed when I was reading this so to add to the confusion is also the art that can get a little confusing to follow definitely has that anime flair and speaking of anime I mean this completely reminds me of things like Cowboy Bebop whenever you have a small cast of characters on a ship or Firefly um, but definitely has the anime flair to the artwork it's beautiful i mean there are moments that you're like man how is that not a cover because it just looks like a cover and yeah and the color tones like i said i wish they had used different color tones for when you're looking at the past when you're looking at the well i guess you're looking at three different timelines um, but when you're jumping back and forth in the timelines when telling the story it gets a little confusing now, the book has 400 pages, and like I mentioned, it retails for $49.99. Let's check out the binding. So it is sewn binding. I've only read it once, and I stretched the spine out one time, because it's 400 pages. Uh, but looks like it's holding together. I know some people had issues with the Something is Killing the Children binding, and I wanted to make sure this was okay. So I gave it a proper read-through, and it's still holding. Uh, the paper stock is this really thick glossy paper that they're using yeah so a lot <laughs> lots and lots of dark tones that they're using throughout the book so there's really no place where you can have any kind of bleed through but that as they say is that if you're interested in purchasing this book, don't forget to check out our sponsor, CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They have excellent shipping and prompt and helpful service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And don't forget that CGN also takes pre-orders. That way you don't miss out on the hottest releases. And they are currently running a special promotion for you Minties. If you're a first time customer, after receiving your order confirmation email, reply back to that email and let them know Near Mint Condition sent you their way. They will then apply a free shipping promotional credit to your next order in the US. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with a kind of deep discount, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the content, the page count, and build of this deluxe edition. Let me know in the comments down below if you are picking this up just purely based on Al Ewing's name or if it piqued your interest or if you've even heard about this book. I know some people, when I was doing my most anticipated collected editions for the month of October, didn't even know about this book. But if you have any questions, leave them down below. If you read it, what did you think about it? Everyone stay healthy and safe out there. Much love.